and amen god bless you good to see everyone amen thank you hallelujah very quickly our time is gone please i'd like you to stand and help me truly honor reverend tende a surprise truly a surprise and he's not alone tonight he's he's with his wonderful ever young mama god bless you help me appreciate pastor anointed also thank you sir the lord bless you hallelujah all the way from kano the pastor of house on the rock kano god bless you sir thank you truly honor you hallelujah and then let's bless pastor dangana the pastor of living faith thank you sir god bless you finally help me appreciate our mother dr mrs onu thank you mommy god bless you in the name of jesus our time is gone we have but a few minutes tonight help us holy spirit in jesus name please be seated I thought to just have an extra session tonight no matter how brief just to teach us again you know please listen carefully believers are only built through the teaching of the word the communication of the doctrine of scripture is how believers become matured and the Bible says, for this reason, for this cause, he gave unto some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the maturing, perfecting of the saints. Hallelujah. And so it is important every time we're exposed to the word of God, no matter how brief, we must receive it with heart opened and we must listen for transformation not just information praise the lord the bible says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them it is the doers of the word that become blessed not just the hearers the bible says a man can hear unto deception that we be not hearers alone but doers of the word hallelujah i just titled a brief session that we'll be having very few minutes and then we'll pray matters of life and destiny i just thought to challenge our hearts again and bring to our consciousness some of these truths that govern our faith walk to the end that we be established to the end that we be strong to the end that we be built it says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified and so i have a few things to talk about tonight wherever we stop we we'll just pray and that does it for tonight but i i I'd like to start tonight by just communicating a burden that has been in my heart it is God's desire that believers grow. Please look up. It is God's desire that we continue to grow. It is not God's design that a believer gets saved and remains at that level. The Bible tells us that growth is part of the expectations of God for a believer. In fact, it says the path of a just is as a shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day that means that if believers don't grow you don't allow space for others to come into the fold soul winning demands that as you are saved you don't remain in that position indefinitely are we together you get to a point where through the ministry of the word and the spirit you are growing now that vacuum should not be left empty are we together someone went up to allow you come there so whilst you are transiting you have a responsibility to make sure that the vacuum that you have created is not left he says his bishopric let another take even though that was because he was a son of perdition but then that god does not want empty spaces left as far as our work of faith is concerned 
you have an assignment to make sure that as you grow spiritually someone gets saved through your life and then begins that journey too this is how god trained us never was there a time when you would look back and not find someone following you even though you are following you are growing there has to be someone who gets saved through your life it is very selfish to get born again through the ministry of a church a pastor a believer and then your focus is just on your growth and let me tell you this all it takes for the devil to destroy a people is one generation of neglect one generation of neglect can destroy something that god has been doing for a long time territorially speaking there should always be replacements so that when god is building you by the time he's releasing you to now serve the purposes of the kingdom there should be other people to his raising are we together now yeah you see this in cities you see this in campuses you see this across many territories a time will come where you have so so many matured and powerful believers but then they focus on their growth and their impact if it's a campus for instance a year will come when all of them graduate and you find out that that campus does not have believers again that continue the purposes of god just one year before men of fire loving the lord and one year later it will be as if god was not in that campus ever this can happen in cities where you will find a few very serious powerful men and women of god and then if they do not think succession and raise people the moment god expands them or lifts them you find out that there is a level of spiritual bankruptcy let me tell you this and and respectfully speaking you're a minister listen to this the proof of your success is not just in miracles signs and wonders is the dexterity and the stability of your succession the ability to leave the imprint of God and his purposes so that when you are not there the only thing that is missed is the unique dimension of God given to you not the continuity of God's program if the absence of a man destroys the program of God that man did not understand the program of God because every time he sends a word to Jacob the intent is Israel it should never remain with one man so you can start where you are Oh, I got born again in 2018 how many people have come to the faith through your life then one time you become a pastor then they send you maybe to go and open a branch of a ministry somewhere and there's no replacement for you that vacuum is created this is the reason why the harvest does not last in many many territories or you have a pile of believers who get born again and there is no system of discipleship and maturity after five years they are still at the same level let me tell you this maturity is a methodical approach it's not just random teaching of any spiritual truth there is an exact body of knowledge allocated for the maturity of the saints it's called marvelous light there is an exact body of truth just like you bring a student who is a prospective medical doctor or a prospective architect there is a body of truth already allocated the student is not going to guess imagine that he goes for lecture in any department and any faculty as serious as that looks he will not be able to get anything even if he has been there faithfully it's his ability to stay along a body of truth that eventually qualifies him are we together so just because you are teaching from the bible does not mean you are edifying it has to be a sequential arrangement of spiritual truth that equip the believers so that all the dimensions of god that should be captured in the life of a believer is captured so three years in christ i should look at your life and certain areas you should not have ignorance in that area no three years in christ you should be able to understand salvation and redemption you should be able to understand kingdom advance you should be able to understand the 
the forces that make for victory in the life of a believer you should be able to understand things that relate to purpose and your assignment you shouldn't just be gallivanting five years in the faith you shouldn't be ignorant about kingdom service five years in the faith and you do not understand the economic system of the kingdom you do not know how to stand in victory what have you been learning and you know that in all of those five years you can be making contact with your bible but there is no growth believers are built methodically the course curriculum that matures believers is called doctrine doctrine is the name given to the course curriculum that builds believers doctrine is not a body of truth that they are not opinions they are the precepts of the kingdom it is dangerous to build believers on opinions opinions can support doctrines but not the basis of the exegesis of god's word are we together and we live in a time where we are passionate about rema and new things and there's nothing wrong with that but you see when it has to do with the business of maturing believers the key listen carefully the key is emphasis and freshness not necessarily newness because you have to go back to these truths again it says i will not be negligent to bring you in remembrance of these things although ye know them and are established in this present truth repetition creates persuasion so when you hear the word of god you hear the teaching of the truth it guides you fathers like papa e hagin they spend they spend years discussing certain aspects of the kingdom life you enter their church anybody whether it's a gate man or an usher you ask him anything around faith those truths have been truths that are most surely believed among that body of believers so just because you are aware that there is this and that in the kingdom does not mean you have understood it are we together from the secular perspective there are times that you do a particular course and when you rise to another level you will revisit it again with more detail but then it's generally the same line of thought again that's how it is that's how believers are built the final thing i will say before we begin our discourse is this it never tires me to repeat this that when it comes to the knowledge of god please listen the knowledge of the person of god we will never exhaust knowing god even in heaven we will be learning god like a curriculum that never ends the worship team sang and said jesus you are the cup that never runs dry but as far as the victory of the believer is concerned there is a finite body of truth are located for the victory of the saints as far as your excelling in life is concerned the truths that make for the excelling of a believer are not infinite to have a narrative that they are infinite is not true there is an exact body of truth that can be exhausted that is responsible for the victory of the believer if it's not finite then it means it was not supposed to be for your victory because you are supposed to learn it understand it then use it are we together jesus was making apostles out of ordinary men and it took three and a half years of teaching day and night there was something he taught them Acts chapter 1 when he rose up from the dead he had no time to even celebrate his resurrection he said guys let's go back 40 days he was teaching them on what the Bible calls the matters of the kingdom afterwards he said I'm good with you the Holy Ghost is ready to come and that was it on the strength of that body of truth they went and they did exploits this is a challenge for you to examine the context of your growth am i really growing if yes what is the basis of my growth how do i know i am growing because i'm in church every week not necessarily because i read my bible every day not necessarily there are people the bible says they are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so they become philosophical in their approach and their knowledge of scripture is just to create vain babblings and argument 
but they never come into the comprehension of truth i want to grow very intentionally i want to be able to handle the truth of the word of life this is what spiritual maturity is about so that on the strength of these truths that you know when you are speaking with a believer you can offer solutions the moment they are speaking you can see the gaps in their understanding based on your enlightenment are we together now yes apostle things are not going well in my family everybody is suffering yet we love god you can diagnose you should be able to diagnose that situation immediately if you have stayed with god and you have learned the ways of god i expect that while that believer is speaking scriptures should just line up and be able to explain to you there has to be an explanation not an opinion an explanation derived from scripture what do you think is wrong with such a person like a doctor diagnosing a patient ah i see the absence of favor in your life this is diagnosis now there's no favor in your life i see that there is a deficiency of strength that prayer brings i'm writing your diagnosis now i'm seeing that the word bank in you is very low because your convictions are largely cultural not scriptural so there's something wrong with your level of transformation now when i'm about to offer a solution i don't bring a random sociological solution this is what you need i recommend something to improve your prayer life something to improve your level of transformation and a grace that imparts favor and i can guarantee go like a doctor says go Doctor, will you be around? It's not necessary. Trust my prescription. Go. And you return back after five days rejoicing. And say, Doctor, even after two days, it didn't look like I was getting healed. Doctor, am I okay? He says, just trust the prescription. You will wake up one morning and it will be like magic. All of a sudden, it's gone. This is how the word of God is. It works like a drug. But you have to trust it. Is a foolish patient that doubts what the doctor is giving him. The doctor did not become a doctor by mistake. Sometimes because of the ease, the doctor can be laughing while he's prescribing. So it makes you think he's not serious. Oh, I see. While he's answering a call and say, okay, I see. Um, take this. I said, doctor, take my case seriously. And he says, Mr. Man, before you were born, I was already a consultant my ease is because of mastery not laziness i have i have i have learned again and again it says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully my desire is that through the instrument of god's word listen i trust our transformation because the content of our growth is scripture if what i'm giving you is my opinion is dangerous in fact is wickedness because my experience is too limited there are still things i'm learning but this word has been tried seven times so when the truths that are communicated you can stake your destiny at it and you know that you will not fail are we blessed i commend you to god a handover ceremony and to his word which is able to build you up and then give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Let me talk about two things very quickly, matters of life and destiny. Number one, I felt stirred in my heart to challenge us on the power of decisions. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. I'll just share two or three things. I have so many of them, but sadly we started late tonight. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. Let me turn the, I thought we'll have it projected. Deuteronomy 30 and verse 19. Verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you listen carefully life and death i have set before you blessing and cursing but i can advise you choose life that both thou and your seed may live 
look up the first revelation here is that decisions do not affect you alone whatever decision you make will affect you and everyone under your care biologically spiritually sociologically choose life so that you and your seed may live there are consequences that our decisions provide not just for us but for everyone connected to us write this down please decisions decide destiny it is true this is not just some sociological cliche our destinies are decided not just by the will of god but by the decisions that we take we live in a world where advancement happens at the instance of choices and decisions our world is full of people today who made all kinds of choices with their lives there are people in old age today some celebrating their decisions and the choices they have made are we together some regretting the decisions and the choices they have made one of the seven when god created man man as the highest of his creation there are seven things god gave man one of it is the power to choose the power to choose from the day god gave man the power to choose it became scripturally incorrect for god to veto the will of man and impose things even at the expense of your eternal salvation god still allows you to choose as passionate as his love is towards man he didn't say no i love you too much you are you don't know what you are doing you're on your way to hell you must go to heaven no he gave you the power to choose a choice that even affects your eternal destiny god gave man the power to choose listen very carefully god will not stop you from making your decisions however it is important for us to know that you do not choose consequences you only make choices it is the choices that choose the consequences please listen very carefully you only have the power to make choices you do not have the power to choose the consequences of the choices a consequence is the resultant effect of a decision good or bad our world is full of people today blaming others for their lives we blame parents listen carefully we blame government sometimes we are right there is some legitimacy in what we are saying but most times we live in a in a sociological context where irresponsibility is marketable if my father were serious i would be this if my mother were serious agreed they were not the best but we forget that god had given us the power to choose and that your destiny does not move just at the decisions of others alone you have the power to literally navigate yourself towards the path of life or the path of destruction using decisions i've shared this here as a story i read about it years ago there were two gentlemen who were the sons of a drunkard very serious drunkard and one of the sons got frustrated because of the lifestyle of his father and then he went on to live a very wayward life very responsible live this life the way he wanted then the other one decided to be challenged by the lifestyle of his father and he said no my life will not be like this he made a decision fortunately he found a very serious mentor who guided him eventually he went on to be a very successful person then one day the brothers were brought together and they were interviewed brother a why did you become such an irresponsible person here was his response he said did i have any choice no no how did he put it he said um it was a justification he was trying to bring 
like my father was the cause for instance my father was the cause for my irresponsibility they asked the gentleman what motivated you to become such a responsible person and he said my father was the cause same reason that made someone to head on to become a failure in life it was the same reason that motivated another person another example someone was coming into a new territory and when he came in as he was passing he met a farmer and he said sorry i hear that this land is full of armed robbers and dangerous people and the farmer said you are right and the guy passed he continued farming another person came into the city and he said i hear there are loving people here very empathetic and the farmer said you are right and the man passed for both questions the question of armed robbers and wicked people and the question of good people and sensible people the farmer's response was you are right that means all of them are in the same domain it depends on what you see it depends on who told you what are we together decisions decide destiny that means you can make up your mind that you are going to be great you can make up your mind that i will live for jesus it's a decision do you know listen we sometimes as men of god we teach people as though their brains are empty they don't do anything with it it's just the holy spirit who says say this or demon says say this no god gave man an independent mind that is rational and can take decisions that are respected in the realm of the spirit the parable of the prodigal son remember the bible says he came to himself he didn't say the holy ghost spoke to him he didn't even say the demon punished him the gentleman came to himself and this is what he said he said how many hired servants does my father have and i am here eating with the swine i will arise my decision i will take that risk and go to my father and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and against you i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the moment he took that decision the father started honoring his decision too they met on the way not in the house decisions are powerful there are people today who have stepped into the realm of prosperity because they got fed up and they said in the name of jesus christ i have found from scripture that as a believer i have the advantage of walking in the blessing i have made up my mind that things must change there are some of you here who went to school not because somebody advised you you looked at all your siblings and you said you know what all i have is five thousand naira i will find myself to zaria or anywhere even if i can only do two weeks let me die there and you took that step and heaven backed you today you have a phd today you have an msc decisions are powerful there are people who became serious with god because they made up their minds the holy ghost assisted them yes but they made up their minds that my life must count i do not want that at the end of my days i would sit down and have to write epistles and say be serious in your youth there are many elderly people today whose lives are full of regret when you sit with them it's just stories of regret oh i remember when so 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 came to nigeria in the 1960s we were the ones who were laughing at those who were serving god look at us now your life can become a motivation or a warning your life can become a key or a padlock depending on the decisions that you make hallelujah I know one of one young lady who was doing well and eventually I think somewhere along the line uh, the uncle who used to sponsor her made up his mind and said he was tired you know the resources were not there maybe like 17 18 and then um, they encouraged her to get married and one thing led to the other and the news got to me and then I told her, I said, what do you want to do? And she said, I want to marry. And I looked at her. I was almost carrying my hand to say, you, 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 who gave you that motivation for a foolish decision? 
I said, no, you continue what you are doing. I will assist, but you have to decide to be serious. Can I tell you this? It is very risky to support people who have not decided. Very risky to support people who have not decided. Someone who has not decided to be serious with God. You are wasting your time buying Bibles, buying concordance, paying his transport to go to church and he's frowning at you and insulting you. It's, you don't give people food because they have a mouth. You give people food because they are hungry. Are we together? God is challenging us with this that our destinies are not dependent on the sociological context that we found ourselves our destinies are not even dependent on the disadvantage that surrounds our lives in as much as we know it now that he told abraham from where thou art not where you want to go where you are lift up your eyes you can lift up your eyes from where you are and make a decision you can make a decision that the next three years of my life it will take a telescope to look at where i'm coming from because of the level of speed consistency and advancement there are many young people who have not made a decision to be serious with their lives they are just growing old they are not doing anything with their lives 40 years you say i'm a last born and they are not doing anything i'm challenging you in love Have you gotten a job well you know the way nigeria is i just submitted i saw something online i don't i wasn't even sure somebody called me i will apply you've not made a decision you can make a decision that every day if i have not prayed my eyes will not sleep it's a decision every day if i have not opened my bible i must make contact with this scripture not out of religion out of revelation i have discerned the profitability of the word of god you can make a decision that every day i must i must ensure that knowledge truth enters my ears before i sleep you can make a decision that i will destroy wastage from my life you can make a decision that i'm going to live a coordinated and orderly life comb your hair polish your shoe be responsible no sagging jeans no acting like a thief and an arm robber it's a decision you can make up your mind from from this day forward i want to be serious goodbye to those friends what happened to you oh you have become a, 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 a what they call it mother mary or you have become this yes i have become it a decision there are people today in prison cells all over the world prophets apostles business people there are people today respectfully speaking in the grave who had no business going there because of decisions friends can help you make bad decisions parents and loved ones can help you make bad decisions you have to ensure for you to reign in life your decisions must be consistent with scripture this is why it is important to know scripture because it guides your decision making process when your decisions are not referenced from and consistent with scripture there is no guarantee for a victorious life the power of choices that's the song I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Don't sing it if you don't believe it. I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. Some of you need to make a decision. My dear friends, I love you. But you people, I sincerely appreciate you, but you are committed to mediocrity. I respect your decision but I'm not ready to benefit from that consequence therefore in love I am cutting out of this group of mediocrity to settle with God for a victorious life can I tell you this somebody who is 20 years old still has room to make mistakes and correct themselves you who is 40 years old now that is your your friend the person can afford to make mistakes and repent at 25 are we together now 
by the time you are 40 years old and you are doing the same thing a 20 year old person is doing 10 years plus 40 you are 50 20 years plus 40 you are 60 after the person misleads you he will later repent and be serious at 30 and use the next 10 years under structured mentorship to make meaning out of his life by the time he gets to where your confusion starts he has been transformed listen to me especially now I'm, i know that i'm speaking to everyone all across the world but permit my bias let me speak to us who are of the middle Belton slash northern origin i say it with every sense of responsibility and respect our sociological context by default does not sponsor the requisite level of seriousness and determination it makes to excel i'm not insulting is i'm part of this system but through transformation and determination you can choose to exempt yourself are we together how can they lie Shilia? you hear people say it and people live all kinds of lives of mediocrity make up your mind where my father could not go where my mother could not go the same energy it takes to insult them is the same energy it takes to decide to be serious Hallelujah. Someone can sit down and say, I didn't have the opportunity to have great parents, but I'm going to be responsible. I will not steal, I will not steal. He will go and open a small car wash. Father, this is what I'm doing as a token of my decision. And God will bless him. One day somebody will come to wash his car and say, young man, what do you do? Say, well, um, I, I, I don't I, I do have, what qualifications do you have? And maybe just say this and that and that. I, I, you look like a nice gentleman. Is it all right if I pick you to come and do something? And in six months, his life has changed. Here's what we say to those people. You are lucky. Oh. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say one more time in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind by the grace of God that from tonight, I will excel. That from tonight, I will be visionary that from tonight I will go forward I will advance in the name of Jesus I refuse to see challenges I see a glorious destiny and in partnership with the Holy Spirit I will get there make up your mind stop all those excuses you were insulting your parents from 20 now you are 40 insulting everyone my father was a herbalist at least he admitted he was a herbalist before he died. You who is not a herbalist, what have you done with the grace that was given to you? Nigerians, Africans, we blame everybody, including Jesus Christ. Blame him for dying for you. Blame him for, blame your pastor. Blame, you are blaming Jesus Christ when you blame the kind of shepherd he gave you. Oh, we are fasting again. Oh, this night vigil again. And you know where you are coming from. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, make up your mind that you will make quality decisions. A decision to know God and love God. A decision to keep your destiny before you and to be serious. A decision to never let pain stop you champions are those who have mastered the art of conquering pain you can weary pain till it leaves you to move forward hmm. yes I may wake up in the morning yes I may stay in that one bedroom flat for 10 years but I refuse I, I set my face like a flint he said this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind I press towards the mark of the of the high calling in christ don't be ashamed of where you are don't be ashamed of the current level take the gary with honor run away from a fake life this kind of fake living don't fake what can be real be patient if your friends come and all you have is a bottle of minerals and gary do not allow people come 
and push you into realms that you have gotten there by faith but you are walking your salvation with fear and trembling to step there and experience don't allow wasters devourers can be men they come into your life and push you to levels that you have not yet attained they mock you for following process at your level you are still here you are in one room and you feel embarrassed for being patient with god make up your mind that i will walk the path of my destiny with honor i will so gary with honor while i pray i will enjoy it lord i give you praise because i will feed nations in the name of jesus christ oh yes i will feed nations while that is happening you have only one trouser don't make the whole world know you have only one trouser you carry your emotions and put on the trouser and force us to know that's the only trouser you have iron it with honor it is one trouser but enjoy it now because you will miss it let me tell you this do you know why sometimes god allows us to pass through those things because you see success is so magnetic it takes the memory of where you are coming from to sustain you the applauds of men you see when you step into the palace you almost become scarless even you can forget that you once were in the prison so the memory of those things remind you so that when success comes with his seduction the holy ghost can use yesterday to say be careful remember you once drank Gary don't act as though yes it's good to walk in the newness of the newness of mind but not it should not lead to foolishness fame can destroy success can destroy so the memory of where you are coming from can help you the god who delivered me from the bear and the lion that same god will give me the head of goliath but you must you must have an encounter with those moments if you've not met the bear and the lion and you stand before goliath you might not bring him down the power of decisions let me talk about two more can you spare me 10 minutes or so it was so strong in my heart while i prayed for this meeting all that the holy spirit kept putting in my heart is that God's people need to know that their decisions have implications we live lives that are very careless consequence free life someone calls you and says I want to bless you come to PZ by 10 you stroll there by 12 he says well the blessing is not there again oh, no. Well, even God understands what is there. There are many of us, there is no sense of consequence. What should I hurry for in life? Please don't, I'm not like that. By my nature, I, I take life easy. You will suffer. It's not a good, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a bad, that spirit is not the Holy Ghost. Carefree life. Which day are you going to go out of your parents' house? You are getting older. <laughs> I will think about it one day. Very carefree life. You have to live with a sense of consequence. Okay? If I do not pray consistently for one month, what is the consequence? You are free to make that choice. But what is the consequence? If you like the consequence, then make the decision. If you are ready to face the consequence, make the decision. But if you are not ready to face the consequence, you must obtain grace from God. Many of us, God is speaking to us because this is the service when you need to make a U-turn over so many decisions in your life. It is a decision to look up to God. That God uses men, but help does not come from men. Help comes through men. But it comes from God it's a decision to stop blaming uncles and aunties and you are angry with everybody and saying they are not even ashamed of themselves they are forgetting about you no I lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence cometh my help he says my help I don't know where yours comes from but my help cometh from the Lord who is the maker 
he doesn't make heaven and earth alone he makes men too hallelujah after this service you need to go back whilst you are preparing for miracle service tomorrow make up your mind that i'll begin to make quality decisions can i tell you something you can make a decision to live healthy it's a decision a decision to live healthy is a serious decision so when you have an option of all kinds of things that the devil tells you that the presence of these things mean wealth you just remember this decision plus 30 years what does it equal hallelujah decisions someone said he went for a meeting he got up in the morning and as soon as he got up in the morning I think he was strolling out and then he saw Baba Deboye just walking and praying in tongues and doing his exercise and he looked at him and he was surprised and the man met him prophesied to him and continued doing his exercise while praying in the spirit that's a decision because he intends to live long to choose life does not just to mean I choose life it means take the decisions that are pro-life are we together make up your mind today that in the name of Jesus Christ I will make quality decisions towards my life let me give you five decisions that you will have to make if you want to excel maybe we should just write it five decisions number one the decision to be serious with God is a very powerful decision you must make a personal decision that I will be serious with God my word study my prayer my fellowship my spiritual growth is a decision that I make number two the second decision is a decision to be transformed make up your mind and decide that I'm ready to replace every wrong paradigm every faulty belief system that I have no matter how it came from where it came from and how long it has been in my mind I'm ready to work on it we've done several teachings that touch on belief systems you can do well to get them listen to me no matter how born again you are the level of your enlightenment your paradigm can destroy your destiny the Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation is that true I told you you know you are transformed when it is difficult to trace you to any earthly region I shouldn't just look at you and say you are behaving like Yoruba people uh-huh Igbo Abi you say yes I said that's how they behave or you are a northerner from where and I help you not by prophecy by the implication of your character your behavior I help you suggest where you are coming from and get it with accuracy if you are transformed I should I should be so shocked when you tell me where you are coming from territorially speaking because you have embraced another set of values a belief system that is far superior to any race or any culture on earth the only place I should be able to associate with you is heaven I should be shocked when you tell me you are Yoruba or you are Igbo or you are Hausa or you are South South or you are American or you are British you mean it yes born and bred there yes ah, are you not the carpenter's son but what was I doing at age 12 I was ensuring that I'll be transformed so when Satan came believing he would meet the carpenter's son he had one who already had it is written it is written that didn't come with his background it is written was something he outsourced in the way oh I know where you come from the men are very irresponsible change that narrative through your life the men are very angry the men are this and that the women are like that change that narrative do not be conformed to this world 
it says i beseech thee brethren romans chapter 12 and verse 1 by the mercies of god it says that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto god holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of service then verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the greek word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this system he says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind if you think zaria and leave zaria the limitation of zaria will be on you are we together now you can travel to america and yet in the realm of the spirit and in your mind you are still in your village have you seen people like that they left egypt in one day how long did it take egypt to leave them every time they face something egypt shows up again and god says oh i want to do so much with these people just because you are physically out of a territory does not mean you are delivered from that territory the word of god is the authorized channel for transformation be it unto me according to your word according to your promises i can stand secure will you carve upon my heart the truth that sets me free according to your word O oh lord be it unto me so from one room you turn to deuteronomy 28 and verse 1 and here's what it says to your destiny it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to do and observe all that is written there it says that you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon you and overtake you i believe that right from where you are god can lift you and give you a voice that the nations will hear without faking it right from where you are make a decision to be transformed my dear brothers and sisters transformation does not come by impartation there's no anointing for it there's only grace that supports your diligence to buy the truth and to sell it not it will cost you materials it will cost you the study of scripture you must invest in the truth make that choice to be serious with God and to sustain a superior belief. When the rich come and talk with you, even though you may not have five naira here, but you have the wealth of a superior understanding. The wealth of a superior understanding. Number three. The third decision that I want you to make with your life is the decision to be exceptionally valuable. The decision to be exceptionally valuable the decision to be exceptionally valuable I can break all this into separate studies I've done a lot of them here we're doing a refresher course here to be valuable can I tell you this for as long as you live in the realm of mediocrity that is the realm of competition that is the realm of bitterness that is the realm of jealousy that is the realm of envy in fact that is the realm of the flesh there is a realm higher than those dimensions excellence by the spirit he says oh lord our god how excellent his name is not only great it excels make up your mind that you are going to be so valuable it will be impossible for your generation to ignore you not from a carnal competitive standpoint but brothers and sisters hear me nobody will clap for you for nothing people love you but they love themselves too and if there is nothing in your life that supports kingdom come if there is nothing in your life that supports the betterment of the life of men you will be at the lower levels of life are we together it's a decision I made with my life that I will be exceptional. I don't have the assignment and I don't have it as a goal to know everything. But the areas where God has called me to function, 
the areas where I need to be competent as far as my personal progress and kingdom come is concerned I made up my mind that I would triumph over pain until I get to a level of mastery and competence someone sent me a text and said apostle you're so good I said compared to what compared to what compared to my background compared to those around me no my reference is scripture my reference is jesus my reference is that standard this is what makes you global listen to me listen to me we live in a world of mediocrity where even as a failure they start clapping for you this is the level of mediocrity that is in our sociological context where nothing has started but the applause have started already now you must challenge yourself under god make up your mind to be valuable don't celebrate mediocrity believe me it will not take you far if you're a worship minister make up your mind that i will sing his praises to the nations in a way and manner that kings will be able to call me and they will be proud the grace of god upon my life will bring such defense to the gospel that your incompetence will not become a reproach to the gospel believers are lazy people because of provisions like the grace of god the anointing and the rest so we excuse it and we're not diligent god even you you know i didn't study as i'm coming to preach but would it make would it have made any difference if i read is it not just your your anointing that comes upon me and you continue to do it until the day god lines all your destiny help us and you close the door of the next 10 years by yourself make up your mind that you're going to be competent don't say i'm in zaria don't say i'm young don't don't refuse those kinds of things i'm a man of god i agree but who and who can place a demand on the grace of god upon your life and not be disappointed ministry ethics zero proper understanding of the foundational doctrines of scripture zero the intelligence and even the psychology of communication zero there is a lot of work to do i agree that you are a prayer warrior but that's not the only key to excelling in ministry you go back and learn the other rudiments that make for excellence before you receive the applause of men study who is clapping for you first If the devil is clapping run away if mediocres are clapping appreciate them but settle down but if champions clap even if it's just once let it be healing enough that you're making progress say in the name of Jesus I make up my mind to be competent to excel are we together yes sir make up your mind if there is one person in this city who will be a reference as far as maybe tailoring and fashion is concerned let it be me don't sit down and say believers don't come to patronize me the last time they came to you what did you do you take it as a challenge and go back and do your homework praise the name of the lord are, are we blessed yeah i returned one time from a crusade and a dear pastor friend was calling me just to comment on what he thought the lord did in the crusade and when he called me he had a message playing and he said what are you doing i said i'm studying he said you are joking i thought you just returned back to the room like an hour ago i said yes sir he said you are studying i said exactly right ah, with all that happened there and i told him something i always say nobody claps for you for the same thing twice if they clap once that's enough for that realm you stay in that realm you have received the applause once and for all champions are goers forward thinkers those who win the olympic as soon as they return just a few months of rest and they are at it again reject mediocrity my dear people 
reject mediocrity you sang when they invited you in a church you went off key you didn't even remember how you started and how you finished and someone outside who is your relative your relative will tell you well done no matter what you do because they love you but you must be honest and assess yourself not condemn yourself i can be better but this is not the best let me go back and do some work you're listening you're learning something try again then one day you become a master it's masters that define their realities they define their rewards nobody is going to bless you and follow you indefinitely please believe this you know you are leading when someone is following you it's in you lord it's in you lord i know there's more that's found me it's in you lord it's in you lord i know there's more that's found me and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found me just sing it one time as a determination will never listen find out how results are produced find out how things work find out how does a church grow how do people excel how does influence happen how does grace come how is it multiplied the seed for an answer is a question if you're not asking anything you don't deserve an answer mm. hallelujah i'm always asking questions asking the holy spirit asking on common mentors asking myself asking the word asking the wisdom of men that has been captured in materials when you ask questions an answer will come how does this work there has to be a way proverbs to 18 verse 1 through desire a man having separated himself the bible declares seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom apostle god is calling me to speak to kings then you must learn how to speak to kings you don't speak to kings like you are speaking to prisoners you must learn that art the ability to speak to kings next decision make a decision a very strong decision that you are going to have very strategic destiny relationships make a decision that you are going to have very strategic destiny relationships Re destiny relationships that are intentional not one that just happens intentional relationships that help you preserve your values relationships that challenge you to rise to the highest levels of your life relationships that provide a leverage be fruitful means be relational everything multiplies on the basis of relationships listen to me if you categorize all men as the same in your life wisdom is not at work in your life you should be able to write who are the top five men in all honesty who are the most useful individuals in your life so far who are the top five people who are deserving of your honor who are the top five people who are the greatest shoulders you can lean on you cannot relate with everybody at the same level no jesus had 72 jesus had 12 jesus had three jesus had one 
there are people when it has to do with resourcefulness they should always be there within your reach there are people who may not be very resourceful but they are incredibly dependable you can depend on them you can wake them 2 a.m in the night and say come and help me hold something if you say things for me they failed already but show me what i would do they would do it and stay there you can't communicate the same level of honor to everybody it's lack of wisdom it's a decision i made with my own life my dear brothers and sisters love everybody relate with everybody communicate a level of honor to everybody but if you want to rise you must be intentional and strategic who are the five people who inspire you spiritually as far as your friends and relationships are concerned if all your friends are poor broke ungodly unserious imagine imagine that if there are five people around your life who are visionless and unserious you didn't count well they are actually six yes sir yes sir he that works with the wise he doesn't have to desire to be wise he that works with the wise the bible says he shall be wise himself it says but the companion of fools shall be destroyed jesus fasted all night to choose 12 people as jesus so filled with the holy ghost and he fasted and prayed all night take the issue of relationships very serious in your life who is who are the few people you can depend on for prayer there's an attack in my life i can call you can we pray can we agree if you don't have this in your life you will not go far for many of you you destroy your life because the moment you are under pressure whoever is available is the voice you talk to it is not wisdom nicodemus came to jesus by night he knew the right person to talk to rabbi forget what we said in the day we know that you are a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him are we together make up your mind make up your mind The Lord says, so 5,000 Naira. You just sit and say, who do I sow to? A, B, C, D, and it stops at any name, and you just, no, there's no discernment. There are people in my life who are ever deserving of honor. It's intentional. I know the grace, and I know the role that they play in my life and my destiny. It's a decision you have to make. Ah! Whoa! betides a man who will look left and right and find out you are alone the bible says it is not good for man to be alone you've heard me say it. it's not just talking about a woman that when man is alone it is risky because two are better than one then it says a threefold cord cannot be easily broken that you must trust god to have at least one or two genuine strategic friends in your life by covenant not emotion Covenant is higher than emotion. Emotions vacillate. I like this. I don't like this. Covenant, you are bound by a revelation. We die together. We stand together. This is the principle of Jewish people. And this is what many non-Christians use. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Is there somebody in your life today that if you desperately need money, like you des you know that I'm not talking of borrowing, you actually can go to the person and say, please, you know I'm not lazy. There is a situation here and the person can actually help you sincerely. If nobody likes you that much, pray for both favor and help us. Believe what I'm telling you. You may think I'm just entertaining you, but the days that come and as you rise, you will see the potency of this. If you have to work for everything by yourself, you are in trouble. 
there must be somebody who sees your life worthy enough to connect to if nobody wants to come close to you something is wrong with you something should happen to your life that someone should be able to look at you and say friendship is worth it with you don't just pray for destiny help us pray to be one first it's a decision you have to make a great decision many of the doors that will open to you in this life will open by relationship woe betides you when you stand and you are watching the corridors of your destiny with many people moving and there is nobody there who your life is worth their attention there are people who may not have physical cash but they have a wealth of relationships there is somebody always remembering them always remembering them for good i remember five years ago what you did come and i will lift you i re can i bless you no i don't need that blessing do you have a son or anybody around you that i will bless there are people in political positions today not because of their competence relationships took them there even your spiritual growth is dependent on relationships believers hear me the easiest way to rise and succeed in life is through relationships it's a decision you have to make in your life if i ask you mention five of your friends do you have an answer or your answer is per week or per season if they pay salary it changes there's no salary it changes if god opens a door it changes you are you are you are moving on a time bomb i've had the honor and the privilege of interacting with a few fathers of faith in this nation by the grace of god and one of their secrets is that their lives are bound in such secured covenants of relationships with a few friends they have they know someone's car can spoil and before he fixes it the friend will send his car and say he should be using it until and later it can even be you will not even know who is the real owner of the car i know someone whose house burnt before he got there true story his friend had moved his things to one of his houses and said over my dead body that your house is if you don't have this kind of people in your life hear me i'm i'm giving you a prayer point go back and pray before you punish your children and your children's children there must be somebody in your life who believes in you enough to die for you greater love had no man than this than a man laid down his life for his friend when i was in secondary school there were friends called ff a friend for food when they visit you you know this visiting day that they do all of a sudden wicked seniors who flog you every time suddenly become nice and cautious because your parents are there and some of these dangerous people may even be your own family members someone wants to lift you somewhere and it's your own family member that will say no he's the last born don't lift him and yet will come out and laugh with you and say how are you may god keep increasing you oh may god give you genuine people i pray for you in the name that is above all names may god who is the helper of men bring sincere people to your destiny sit down it's a decision you have to make one last decision for the sake of time and then we'll pray i pray that the words that i communicate to you tonight would help to shape your destiny that it will give you a reason to think this night hallelujah the last decision that i encourage you to make tonight is the decision to be empowered the decision to be spiritually empowered hmm. my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn 
And I am anointed with fresh oil My head you have exalted like the horn of a unicorn And I am anointed with fresh oil The decision, listen to me the decision to contact genuine authentic spiritual power to the degree that empowers you to represent the purposes of the kingdom without shame is a decision you must make in your life acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth not just that he was anointed look at the extent to which god anointed him he went about under the influence of that anointing the bible declares doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil believe me when i tell you the anointing truly makes you a blessing the capacity to provide supernatural solutions to the lives and the destinies of men the ability from the spirit to dislodge the powers of darkness to ward off the arsenals of hell the ability to take advantage of the grace and the supply of the spirit and move destinies forward is a worthy decision it takes more than just quoting scripture it takes more than just having head theological knowledge listen to me dear brothers and sisters it takes even more than just a decision to go forward there must be an engracing of the spirit a smearing of that oil from heaven that can come upon a man and distinguish you turning you not just to a worker of miracles but to a sign and a wonder yourself he says i am the children that the lord has given me we are for signs and even for wonders in israel i'm glad that i made this decision many years ago and i thank the lord god of heaven for the staying power to push and endure it still remains a pursuit but today i look back and i'm humbled and even broken that God granted me the grace to stay and contend for spiritual empowerment. Be ready for empty pews if there is no genuine anointing. Be ready for an empty life if there is no genuine anointing. There is a hungry world that is desperate to see Jesus revealed, to see Jesus manifested more than just the communication of the talk of men. Problems are real. Challenges are real. And most of them are beyond the realm of intellect. They are beyond the realm of science. It is his divine power that gives us all things. The giver is his divine power. Oh, God has called me to walk in the healing ministry. I beg you in the name of Jesus and I beseech you, stay until you contend for grace that is genuine, that can really truly heal the sick. Tomorrow, several thousands of people will be here on this ground. Several thousands others will be connecting around the world, hoping and trusting that God will come through for them. We can make our boast in the Lord and say, come God will heal you. Come God will deliver you. But will it really happen to them? Someone right now is depending not just on Jesus Christ alone, but depending on your level of contention for grace. For their miracle. You literally have the power to make someone's challenge one day left. And it's gone. He says to appoint unto them that mourn. You can set a date for their liberty. What greater expression of love and kindness is more than that? God is, God is calling you into the ministry of wealth and abundance. More than just your knowledge and sense of finances and business, do you really have the grace that empowers people? I became a spiritual archaeologist. I took my Bible and I sat down and I said, Oh God of heaven, Please do not send me with just a salmon. My world needs more than a salmon. Do not send me with just a good heart. 
my world needs more than a sincere heart do not send me with more than just a kind heart the world needs more than character the world needs more than a sincere heart there must be an investment of the spirit power from on high genuine power that comes upon a life and lifts you to a level where your life becomes a sign and a wonder where when people behold you they begin to rejoice because they know when they met jesus they were happy they knew their predicaments had come to an end i continue to pray and challenge myself by the spirit that god will help me to rise to that level in the spirit where as i stand and i look at people's situation i can rejoice and cry with them and say i know that an end has come every time they met jesus they rejoiced if you were the widow at Nain and you were on your way to go and bury your last child if you saw jesus he represented hope this is my pursuit so while you clap for me and say apostle thank you for what you are doing my mind is stayed on that target lord we must get to a point where we heal nations in a day we must get to a point where we bring continents and territories to their knees for jesus in one day we must be able to dislodge the powers that sit not just over families but over territories bring down these horns in one day there is a dimension of grace that can supply that result until we are there we are not yet there this is my motivation I don't listen to the uploads of men for too long thank you thank you for this and that's it we had the miracle service in Abuja and I mean I cannot begin to tell you the tremendous testimonies not just there online the mighty testimonies and when I went back after rolling before God to tell him thank you I said father thank you I am grateful but I'm not satisfied there was still one person in that auditorium who was not healed there was still one destiny that was still left because of that one person I forget the things that are behind don't just say I prayed five people were healed out of how many ten people were delivered out of how many that your life will be such a blessing your showing up is like the coming of the ma of his majesty himself the lifting up your voice is like the opening of the gates of men's destinies brothers and sisters until we get there as a ministry and as individuals let us not be complacent with what god is doing thank god for what god is doing with koinonia all around the world but do not fall into the seduction of greatness the enemy of best is better better looks very comfortable but we must keep pressing with everything with everything we will shout for your glory with everything with everything we will shout for
then that ye are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses the bible declares it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us then it says that we run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the bible declares who is the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him the bible says he endured the cross and despised the shame prayer point number one father my life must count i obtain grace grace from heaven lift your voice and pray i make a decision that my life must count as far as kingdom come is concerned my life must count Make sure you are praying. You are brooding over every darkness. You are causing lights to shine from. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I set before you life and death. You're going to open your mouth right now and choose life. Choose life means choose prosperity. Choose life means choose longevity. Choose life means choose greatness. Choose life means choose a destiny of impact. Lift up your voice and pray. Declare, declare by the Spirit of God. I shake off every limitation, cultural limitations, tribal limitations, territorial limitations, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. I make decisions that are pro-life. I make decisions that are pro-greatness. I make decisions that are pro-spirituality.
listen our time is up but i want you to turn listen to me please turn this song into a prayer the holy ghost is called a helper i have many things to tell you he said but he cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth the helper lift your voice and declare your need for his ministry afresh the ministry of signs and of wonders the ministry of genuine spiritual empowerment hallelujah praise the lord now just a moment together as a family of faith here and following across the world i'd like us to pray for the miracle service tomorrow father thousands are coming here and connecting online trusting to see your outstretched arm we agree with you may your power come may your grace be made manifest in the midst of god's people lift your voice and pray let's pray as a family of faith following from every nation pray the hearing of faith the working of miracles by the spirit of grace hallelujah praise the name of the lord now please listen let me challenge you make sure you do not come alone make sure that you don't just invite people but trust god to invite people who you know have real issues trusting god for grace for those who will not be able to make it you can do well to collect their prayer requests and let's come tomorrow and trust god for grace to move in power and solve problems it's not just the name of a program that happens the last week of the month god ordained this as a prophetic platform to be able to reach the nations and to be a blessing so do well to be part of it and let me encourage you avoid loitering around and just wasting time sit down and think through these things it says now that you know these things happy are you if you do them this is a charge tonight that calls for action you should go back settle down rest a while and then open your notebook and begin to write some things if at the end of tonight's talk you don't write anything then you really did not profit praise the name of the lord once again i truly want to honor reverend tende and his entire team thank you sir thank you we do not take for granted your love hallelujah